Thanks so much, John. And Microsoft also had earnings madness today. Reporting sales and profits fell in the first quarter. Net income dropped by 22 percent down to four and a half billion dollars and sales fell to 16 billion dollars. Corey Johnson back to break down the numbers in today's double drill down. We got a double drill down today. What's behind the sales flow? The double, the dreaded, the triple D, the dreaded double drill down. Yes, look, the Microsoft results very interesting, not just because we know the stock price doesn't really tell us a lot what's going on. When we look at a one-year stock chart of this company, it doesn't really indicate what's going on, the real crucial time this is and how important this quarter is to the company. But what we see from Microsoft uh, is uh, an interesting change. I think when I looked through the numbers, the thing that really jumped out at me was the dramatic slowdown in the sales of Windows, their most important product. Now, we know that Windows 8 is around the corner, but when we look at the year-over-year change in sales of Windows, you've got three of the last four quarters substantially lower than the previous year, but this one this last quarter, I mean, look at that, 33% down to their biggest business unit. Uh, a big concern for Microsoft, Nicole. Okay, but we know that there's a global PC sales slowdown. Is it that or is it something bigger than that? Well, I think the global slowdown is a really important part. Obviously, they're, they're going into market transition. What we see, I think it's one of the big changes in technology is that we see that consumers are aware across all product lines that the next thing is coming. We saw it in iPhone sales when it fell before the iPhone 4S suddenly in a given quarter. We see it with this Microsoft release as well. And as Microsoft starts to try to get ready for this Windows 8 and try to get ready for a product that works on a mobile phone, that works on a, a Surface tablet and works uh, across platforms, from all the way back to the desktop, that slowdown in Windows sales sort of shows that the consumer is thinking about all those things at once. So in spite of that, they're also spending a ton on marketing, right? Well, I mean, look, uh, even in, in a downturn in this quarter, they still spent uh, $3 billion, nearly $3 billion in marketing, $3 billion with a B. That's a big number. But as a percentage of revenues this last quarter, I think they've been holding their guns back a little bit. Only 18% of revenues spent in marketing in this quarter. And uh, someone is joining me to talk about that very issue, uh, Jeff Hazlett, uh, former CMO at, uh, at Kodak, more importantly CEO of the Hazlett Group, uh, doing uh, uh, marketing advice for companies, uh, uh, some of the biggest companies in the world. Microsoft is looking at the next couple weeks, even week, let alone next couple of months, as maybe the most important marketing time in the history of this company. Well, it's certainly the biggest bet they've ever placed. It's the biggest bet that's placed in the industry ever, one-time spend. In fact, this spend is so big, I hear Obama might be even put out a press release claiming credit as an economic stimulus package. I mean, it's certainly going to move. Big. It's big. It's going to move. It's like when I stop eating out, the restaurants in San Francisco all of them start hanging signs. <laughs> exactly. Over. Look, uh, it's a big spend, and it's going to have a, an impact throughout the industry. But I wonder when you look at the message, that Microsoft has to put out there. You know, they're putting one out with earnings today, but their focus on the consumer and their focus on IT spending, what do they have to say? Well, they're trying to get people to switch and make a change, and to do that for behavior, you have to make a statement. So I think they're doing the right thing, and I think Ballmer's saying all in. We're putting the chips all in, and a big spin like this. Now, if you look back over the history of Microsoft, when they launched back in 95, when they launched a little bit later, they did big things like this, maybe not as much money. So in this case, they're really t telling people to move away from a malware-infested, a uh, Pentium 4, you know, desktop version into this new mobile version, into a tablet, into a phone, into whatever else that they're going to be in sale and have a, you know, experience across the board. And I think it's a big thing for them. And to get people to make that change, they have to be bold. Well, so you talk about making a change just to the most dominant operating system ever. Huge. And it's, it's, you know, yeah, but, who get, but who gets all the attention? I mean, Apple right. sneezes and everybody's rushing to cover it. So for free. For free, absolutely. And people are lining up. I don't think people are going to be lining up in stores to get this. But I think people are waiting for it. They've been ready for it. And I think it's a good move. Now, if he's, if he's right, you know, they'll be carrying him on his shoulders through Town Square. If he's wrong, they'll be taking him to Town Square and burning him with the money that he spent on this campaign. I mean, that's, that's what's going to happen, and that's what's at risk. That will be quite the pyre. I, <laughs> you know, while you talk about the experience that users have of this product, and I want, I want to ask you, you know, when I was preparing this segment, I was, uh, the microphone was open, I was about to check someone in. My Microsoft Windows, my Excel crashed. Oh. I said a, a four-letter word, I smacked my hands on the desk, and I was hoping, praying that it wasn't on the air. That's the experience 
that a lot of people have had of Microsoft products. Right. From a marketing standpoint, how do they have to change? How can they change that conversation? Well, it, the, it's about the brand, and that's their brand right now. Their brand has to be a promise delivered, so they have to show that this promise, this one touch anywhere screen that they're going to be able to have in the software, is going to be worth the promise, and that's going to be the new brand. Time will tell, and and it's got a lot of people betting on this. I mean, imagine the entire PC market is hoping that this is going to go, and that's why you've seen, I think, the slowdown that you've seen so far in Microsoft. You've seen it in other sectors along this area because if if they're wrong, everybody falls flat. Well, look at the results we've seen so far in the PC industry in the third quarter. So Intel, Hewlett Packard, Dell, all reporting weak results uh, in you know, in recent quarters, not just the most the last quarter. And they're obviously all leaning on that. But then there's this aspect, which is part of a PC slowdown. But the other aspect is that there have always sort of been two profit points in the, in the industry. It hasn't been the PC makers. It's been the chip maker and the operating system. Exactly. Is there a sense that that, that world is changing, that they have to tell the story that we give the oh. value to your computer? A oh, absolutely. But they have to be on that and have an operating system that works on the phone and works on the mobile tablet as well. Because that's what you're doing today. And everyone's going there. You're not tied to the desktop like you used to be. Now, there are still some companies that are doing that, but by and large, everyone's walking around with mobile devices. They're watching this show with a phone in one hand and another mobile device in another. So that's what that's where they have to go. They have to get to this cloud, and they have to make a big bet to make it happen. Uh, we didn't have. We always have Kodak news before you show up. Whether yeah. we plan to talk about Kodak <laughs> no, or not, whether I like it or not, we don't have it today. But I wonder when you when I when I, I think about Kodak a lot as to you. Sure. When you look at a company that did not manage a technological change well, that could have used that to pivot into a business, certainly in mobile, people use photography like crazy. Kodak couldn't get there. Can Microsoft use the shift to mobile to rebrand themselves as an as a operating system that works, as an operating system that de is to be dependent yeah. on? If the product's good, sure. If it's bad, no. There's no way. If, if, you, know, you can't dress it up and make it look pretty and still be a pig. It's got to be a really pretty pig or something altogether different. And that's really what's got to happen here. Uh, what are, the, are there also different formats to advertise here? Are we, are we, is, is traditional media going to be the best place for, places for them to go, or should they be going after uh, mobile, online, social media? It, it, so they've on? really got to do a blend here because think about their customers. Their customers are rooted in that desktop. That's where they've been, so they still got to play there, but they have to show some of that edginess. I look to see them do some things like they used to in the airports, in the malls, in everywhere that people are. I think it's going to be nice to see them come back, and I think a lot of people People are really rooting for them because it's 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 been a company around for a long time. They've done a good job. Most businesses wouldn't be around if it weren't for them, and we wouldn't have the kind of technology advances if it weren't for Microsoft. So I think they've just got to be able to show that hey, we can do that again. Interesting stuff. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they push this thing out there. You're right because they do have to reach the old users and the new users, new users as well. Jeff Hazlett. But Two billion dollars, huge. All right, thanks a lot. <laughs> Appreciate your time, Nicole. And also huge mobile, of course, a big.